Well, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. I have waited a long time for this moment. Just over three months, in fact. So back on our episode five, you'll remember I mentioned the intro sounding weird. I don't remember the music being so different for season one. It sounds like a different recording altogether. Maybe it's the way it's EQ. And later, as the episodes went on, I paid a little more attention and realized the volumes change in the intros ever so slightly. Who the hell knows why? But that's not what I noticed at first. I had to go through them to find out where it changes. And damn, I've been waiting for this moment. So listen to these two things. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Okay, I'll already see one. Give me. They're the same picture. I'm no band guy. I was an orchestra kid growing up though, so forgive me band kids if I get the instruments wrong, but there's so much flutter going on in the high end for this buildup of what I think are flutes and violins. On the shitty version, it's just so flat and empty and relies so heavily on what I think are the horns holding that B and all those other harmonies in there. The little dip in volume in the beginning just feels so empty where it drops right before it comes back up, but the other one's a lot more evened out. Then the melody in the next part changes too. Well, it doesn't, but here, hang on. See, this intro just feels so much more filled out, mostly because you can hear both octaves being played in this one. If you don't know what that means, take the first note, E, E. If you play this E right here, then the higher version over it, E. It's the same note, but it fills out the space and makes it seem bigger. In the old one, we were hearing just one octave, and if there was a second octave in there, it was really fucking hard to hear. That's the thing. Are these the same recordings, just mixed differently? There's things that just don't line up for me, but let's say goodbye and thanks for the memories. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't believe I still have subscribers. What happened? I guess that pirate brew is stronger than we thought. No, I only took a sip. We were drugged, obviously. <laughs> so I don't get it. I love that little one sip line, but he probably meant it for the most part, if this is any indication. But they switch to drinks, and we see these other guys, like, immediately keel over. Do you think Hondo just drugged all the drinks, like, just to play it safe, like Gus Fring style? <laughs> Or alternatively, Obi-Wan is more of a lightweight than once thought. They must be trying to triple their payday. A shrewd observation, Master Kenobi. Oh great. I did warn you these pirates were devious. You will notice our shackles are bound together. I have tried to separate us to no avail. Could you at least spare me the sound of your constant chatter? And while I hold my tongue, the two of you will devise a brilliant strategy for getting off this godforsaken planet? Yes! yes. Excellent. God, I love this episode. What else is there to say? Like, it just feels so good. Yeah, maybe you could make the argument that this kind of makes Dooku feel like a chump, like I always complain about with Grievous and any other droid, but I don't see it. I think it's kind of, well, hopefully, widely known that Force users can't exactly just walk up to, say, someone near your skill in the Force and just choke you out and not be able to resist it, unless there's, like, this big gap in power. But there's also the fact that, you know, they're chained together regardless. I don't know, I really love it. Not to mention the whole full circle moment of having Qui-Gon's master with his apprentice with his apprentice Actually, watch your damn mouth when you talk to your great grand Dooku. What is this kamikaze looking bandana anyway? Do we see this symbol around anywhere? I think we could have gotten a bigger ransom from the separatists. Sometimes I wonder why I bother to keep you around. They would simply send their droid armies here to wipe us out. As my sweet mother always said, if one hostage is good, two are better. And three, well, that's just good business. Do you think he's just full of shit here or what? Like, do you think his mom really did this? Damn, dude, forget the Kenobi series. We need a mom do Onaka spinoff. On those asked me to go out and meet the Republic senators and bring them here with the ransom. I want you to intercept that ship and force it down. I want that spice intact. What does intact mean here exactly? Isn't it just coming in as like powder? Oh my God, we finally got the eye patch we've been looking for. Uh, peg leg last episode and an eye patch. <laughs> you know what, guys? I bet you these boxes weren't a mistake after all. I bet you they're just like different military stuff that we just don't understand. What about Hondo? That nitwit couldn't kill a Nuna. He depends on me for that. You know, we don't actually see Hondo doing too much in terms of action. He's usually able to just, well, smart his way out of situations, but Nunas are actually these little turkey roly-poly looking things that we see a lot in Star Wars randomly. I'll tell him this ship was destroyed with everyone on it, including the spice. By the time he finds out the truth, we'll be long gone. You know, this seems like a pretty shit plan, my guy. And have you just been waiting for a chance like this to fuck over Hondo? Like, look at all these other pirates. Do you have a mutiny just waiting on standby here? It kind of makes Hondo's forgiveness later an even bigger power move. And we be landing. I Oh, ah, son of a bitch! Captain Hondo, the leader of those brigands, will accept the ransom. I love the word brigand for whatever reason, and it really sells the pirate feel for me with these guys, but we hear it twice in this episode, and I don't know that it's ever used again besides- Unhand me, brigand! 
Whoa, dude, nice outfit. Not uh biased over here or anything. It's a nice contrast juxtaposed with the red here, though. The last time I went on one of these ransom missions, I spent three weeks in a dungeon. And then had to walk 1,500 miles uphill to the nearest senator school both ways. <laughs> But Jesus Christ. I do love this guy's fuck out of here energy, though. Secure yourself. Mr. Trying. He's a stuck in. Hold up. Wait, what the hell? Who is this? BJ Hughes? It's kind of weird that they had Ahmed Best do Jar Jar for Bombad Jedi I and know. in Supply Lines, which happens way after this episode. Was he just, like, sick that day or something? And no offense to this guy, but I'm glad he didn't do all of them. My boy Ahmed kills it. It really sucks that this guy got so much hate for the role, man. I forgot to mention in the last episode, but man, this guy looks sick sometimes. <laughs> Oh, damn, animation team, I see you. That's the exact shot on the screen. I say that out loud, and it seems pretty damn stupid to say, but I mean, we've seen screens like this that are just wildly inaccurate looking. <laughs> so damn if I'm not gonna call them out when you get it right. That's gotta be one of the coolest fucking seats I've ever seen in my life. Sir, you, you must get out of the cockpit. We're hit! So you must leave. All right, listen, because I've already stopped myself like three times from complaining, but here goes nothing. I hate when Jar Jar's stupidity is treated like this. Are you seriously, seriously telling me that military soldiers would so politely put up with this guy's shit like this right now? I get it, kids. Yeah, yeah. That argument is so tired. This show is not just for kids. Honestly, it's hardly for kids at all. So what? Just because he's a senator, they're treating him with respect? Yeah, I'm calling bullshit. This episode is fantastic anyway, but I could have 100% done without Jar Jar and instead just this guy the whole episode. Jar Jar might have his place sometimes, but this episode ain't it for me. Kinda shitty that his is the only one that just flew off like that. <laughs> Good thing you yelled at Jar Jar to buckle up, huh? Don't you think our priorities should be escape first, eat second? Do control your protégé's insolence so I can concentrate. Anakin. What? Control your insolence. The Count is concentrating. Nothing much to say here other than, you know. <laughs> Damn, I fucking love Obi-Wan. Also, I love how Anakin's face is all huffy and puffy when he says what, but as soon as he realizes he's just being a dick, he starts laughing. Little things like that make all the difference, man. Mission no sense, Senator Karras. All the talk dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Kind of weird how his arm sticks out like it's reaching towards them here, but then it looks like it's way more up against the wall in this shot. They crashed into Dosha Field. Good. Good. Hey, I know that poster. The back wall here actually goes through a couple weird transformations. First, you see it with this weird door looking thing, probably, and the poster. But then a couple seconds later here, it's just this random support beam light looking thing with that poster seemingly disappearing and being replaced on a different wall by a different poster, which we've also seen before. And that door thing. The posters will be on the test, by the way. Have I mentioned there's going to be a test? There's going to be a test, so you better be paying attention. Does anyone know what this is? It kind of looks like Hondo, but also kind of looks like his little monkey lizard thing. But I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Hondo. It's a symbol for his pirate gang, which you can also find in The Force Awakens, interestingly enough. You can also see the Mandalorian symbol, and the same symbol that Zero the Hutt has as a tattoo. Weird. We do know where we're going, don't we? <laughs> Boxes! Hush, Anakin. Do we know where we're going? What? Are you sure it's safe? The key works. Is it safe? Of course it is. <laughs> right. Oh, what to do, what to do, what to do. I don't want to kill you. In fact, you seem like decent fellows. Even you count. Once I get my money, we can go back to being friends. You're so fine dress, Senator. Goes in with good in their heart. Always passing too soon. I love how the subtitles for Jar Jar actually say his ridiculous shit. Like, what do they look like in other languages? Are uh, you now in command of the mission? Technically, no. Then, uh, who is? Representative Binks is the highest ranking person here. I swear to fucking God! Those guys are spitting out acid. These beasties don't like the geysers neither. You want to deactivate the cell bars and go out drinking. I want to deactivate the cell bars and go out drinking. I love the little laugh at the end here. Hey, wait, you can't fucking hide from me, D. Bradley Baker. I know that's you in there. As if for every single one of the clones wasn't enough. Does this guy just get like 90% of the earnings from the show or? They could be the ones we're supposed to deliver the ransom to. Or they are the ones that be shooting us down. Or, you know, they saw both. <laughs> Go. Hang on, that has to be James Arnold Taylor, too. Or Obi-Wan. Once that geyser goes off, they're broiled. As long as those beasties are up there, we're safe. When they run, we run. Misa knew it was safe since the beasties are nearby. 
Uh, you know what? This part I don't mind. Yeah, I guess you can nitpick it too if you want, but he might be a dipshit, but you can't deny he's way more in touch with nature than the highly trained militant clones by his side, literally grown in a lab on an ocean planet. Yeah, they get training on all kinds of galactic shit, and you've got clones like my boy Gree over here just learning about all kinds of creepy space monsters, but Jar Jar being able to put two and two together makes sense for me. But don't worry, I'm sure you'll wind up screwing this up in a minute. Oh, hurry, it's up, Dooku. Yeah, fucking box! You should be more patient, Master. The Count is an elderly gentleman and doesn't move like he used to. I suppose you're right. I would kill you both right now if I did not have to drag your bodies. See, guys, I told you! <laughs> This thing gets shot and kind of veers off, but it doesn't actually look like it went down. Like, it kind of just ran into this random direction without a rider. So why did he jump off, exactly? He didn't, like, fall off or anything. We've got the spikes back. Now we just have to get beyond that wall. These astromechs here look creepy as shit with this smile looking thing in three eyes. Also, similarly to the droid commandos and rookies, if you look closely enough, these are both the same paint job down to the rust and everything. Yeah, I wouldn't bother to paint two the same thing either with like a bajillion dollar budget, I guess. So I can't be the only one that gets total avatar the last airbender vibes here. Hey, no, get out of here. From the blue spirit episode with them pole vaulting their way from bondage and their captors chasing behind them. I mean, these guys are no fucking Yu Yan archers or anything. The Yu Yan fly to a yard killing from a hundred trees away with you without killing tree. You think Dave being on board, having been on both shows, is responsible for this? Not a far stretch, I'd say, since the Blue Spirit came out in 2005. Fuck, man, I'm getting old. It's too heavy. I can't do it. Drop! Dooku! Honestly, bro, I don't know why you didn't. I mean, other than the overtly obvious Obi-Wan is a teacher's pet, he probably would have found a way to make it work. Well, look at that. Power lines. Oh yeah, kind of fucking convenient they picked today to come back from their power line beach resort on Scare for this episode, even though they missed the last one. <laughs> They're collective bad guys. All right, come on, man. I made such a big deal about this awesome track in the last one, and you're still playing it? Do you guys just play this song on repeat all day? Play that same song. All right, same song. Here we go. Well, Dirk. Did the Republic arrive with my spies? They didn't send a ransom, they sent an army. I didn't want to torture anyone. But now, even in a galaxy at war, you uh, hope to find uh, some uh, honor. We have to find a way out of here before Senator Karras and Jar Jar arrive. I think it's time to lose the dead weight. I mean, at this point, yeah, shit. You're all individually cuffed now, at least. I mean, yeah, their odds are better together, but still. Imagine they just tried to do their own thing and Dooku just creeping behind the corner following them like someone cheating on a math test. You two, come with us. Ah, shit, put the math test. We're going to need your services for this part of the mission. We need you to go out there and negotiate with the pirates. Misa no liking this idea, but I think these are what Senator Karras would have do, sir. I love this little, oh shit, that actually worked, hand gesture thing here. Damn, man, what the hell are these tables? Just air hockey tables? There's so many shots of their drinks effortlessly just sliding across the table. And in the last one, it just makes a magic stop right here. I'm no physics guy, but at some point, man, one of those fucking drinks is gonna go all over the place. I don't care how much of a pro alcoholic you are. Actually, shit, yeah, your odds should be terrible. I take it the Republic didn't arrive with the ransom? Oh, they did, they did show. With a huge army that they thought would be enough to get the better of me. Hundo! That can't be right. Are you calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther! <laughs> All right. You're going to insult me? I'm just saying. Anakin, this may not be the best time for you to speak. But you at all see even in torture you can just see the love these two have for each other just shine through what are you supposed to be Keto Wallace. you might be worth something as well you representative pink will take you to your jedi friend okay then oh, sorry sorry It's this shit, man. Even for kids, you can't come up with any more clever of a way to solve all these problems. I get the whole pair the clones with Jar Jar and see what happens idea, even if this was a little too far, but still. You can see the power lines actually explode as each one of the links fail here. Maybe that's why the last episode they were mysteriously vanished, because maybe they accidentally used this scene from this episode? I don't know, maybe not. What happened to the power? I was having fun. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't drink on the job, kids. See, at least if he tripped the guy before and then used the turret to blow it up, it's his own doing and decisions, not some dark magic Sith Lord shit. Kill him! 
He's no representative, he's a plague! He's right. Who's a plague? Me, sir? Yes, you, sir! Nice work, sir. It won't be long until Hondo figures out what's happened. Yeah, one second, Duco. I see a different poster. There's a Royal Guard one from earlier, though. <laughs> Up, wait, there she is. What, uh, what are you doing? Here's another one of those things that would have made me shit my pants had I watched this as a kid. I know it's not much, but I was always one of those kids that thought like way too hard about certain things. And Jesus, bro, imagine being the one getting choked in this. It's a film for 12 year olds. Let me go, and I might let you live. Hang on a second. So I mentioned in the last episode with the power line thing that the twilight moved from this shot in this episode. Yet right here, once again, it's in the position from the last episode. I don't know how animation works, but shit, man. They should make an overanalyzing series about their own series before releasing it, I guess. Mesa have a word with the spices. It's the mother Excellent, Jar Jar. Assuming the pirates still have Count Dooku to trade. answers that question. You're going to arrest me? Huh? Captain, you have nothing we want. And since we're not prisoners anymore, you have no bargaining power. Let's leave on even terms. Hold, hold! After everything, you're just going to walk away? We have no quarrel with you, and we seek no revenge. Very honorable. You will find that Count Dooku does not share our sense of honor. And he knows where you live. So what do I think of this episode? I think it's awesome, baby! This episode is pretty much perfect if you can look past the Jar Jar stuff, which I can, don't get me wrong, but would it have really ruined the show to just work on him a little bit with his stupid luck? When you watch them together as an entire arc, it definitely helps. That's the thing about season one though. It's so hit or miss on the episodes that are really worth watching or are just like, eh, they're not terrible, that most of them don't really warrant much of an interesting retrospective at the end, unlike this one. But when I think about Obi-Wan and Anakin's relationship throughout the entire Clone Wars, this is absolutely the first thing that comes to my mind. Patron shout out! Drachmir, the only pirate who's been known not for their thievery, but for their growing collection of droid fingers. David, who once rode the wings of an Ebre all the way to Belmora Run, only to find Plo Koon tripping on spice. In Friends Crumb, the one crumb that constantly finds its way into Padme's crazy hairdos. Taylor Lynn, the next official candidate for Supreme Chancellor, or whatever the hell Disney comes up with next. Marcus Fleischer, the man single-handedly responsible for driving Wookiees right back up their trees by revealing his dashing smile. And Mr. Schnuffle, one of the only people left from the original animated Clone Wars series that managed to escape into the 3D world. Huge shout outs to my Jedi Knights as well. Brandon Esposit, Corchin, Neforax, Salsus Volpes and Taco Llama. Guys, I know I just said I'll get to the Clone Wars movie in the last one, but I swear it's gonna take every fiber of my being just to get through it. I might just do a review style video rather than pick at it like the overanalyzing ones. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Until next time.